let's talk about the twin paradox. I like this picture of the two twins copy and paste. Actually, my Uncle Dave, he used to say when he saw twins, hey look, there's Pete and there's repeat. So what's the actual twin paradox? Let's actually discuss it. And after that, I'm going to show you uh, why it's actually not a paradox. So we're going to consider this situation um, aptly named. I named these two people in this example, Alpha and Beta. Actually, Alpha is a girl's name here in Denmark. So I know uh, someone actually named Alpha. And I've actually seen that Beta is a boy's name in some countries. So let's just say, so Alpha and Beta are twins. So we've got Alpha goes in a ship and she travels at 0.9 C, so 0.9 the speed of light, so 90%, uh, for 10 years with respect to Earth, where Beta stays. So let's maybe do this diagram. Maybe we can sort of draw the situation of what's actually going on here. So I'm going to draw myself the Earth. There we go. And let's put Beta here. So Beta is standing here on Earth. And now we've got Alpha. And she is sitting in a rocket. And she goes away for 10 years and somehow comes back again. All right, so T equals 10 years. This is the situation. Remember, though, this time is that's 10 years is the time that Beta records. So we need to look at, you know, how much time does alpha record? You might recognize this example. I've actually done this example before in another video. Um, so what we're going to do is just redo it really quickly just to go over the physics of it. We're going to need to look at uh, a relativistic um, time dilation equation. So remember it's delta t equals gamma delta t zero. So this is the equation we're going to need to use here. Where delta t zero, that's the proper time. Oops, so I should maybe label that. That right there is proper time. That's the person who measures time for whom the whole uh, events here happens at the same place. So in this case, that's A, because A is measuring, you know, if you sit in Alpha, she's sitting in her spaceship, nothing actually happens to her, really. She just sits in her spaceship, the Earth goes away, and eventually the Earth comes back again. So for her, everything took place at the same place. So in that sense right there, so she's measuring the proper time. So because of that, then we can actually calculate this. We can actually figure that out. So we can say, all right, well, uh, let's see now. Delta T zero, that's just going to be delta T over gamma. And we know that delta T is 10, so it's going to be 10 over gamma. Let's figure out what gamma is. Do you remember that one? That one is uh, 1 over 1 minus V squared over C squared, all that square rooted. And so you can look that one up too. You don't have to memorize it. So if we do this, then we end up with that 1 minus, let's see, 0 0.9 squared c squared over c squared. What ends up happening is the c squareds cancel out. We end up with, um, let's see, that'll be 1 over uh, 1 minus 0 0.81 square rooted. Let me actually just figure that out. So I've got, uh, I've got to do the square root. Uh, what's that? 0.19. I take uh, 1 over that. I end up with an answer of gamma is 2.29. So what do I do? I put that into here. So finally I get the delta T zero is 10 over 2.29. Let me just do that. So 10 divided by the answer. I end up with an answer of 4.35 years. Now why does this matter? It's because alpha ages, you know, 4.35 years. So see, so what's happened is uh, we've got alpha appearing to age less than her brother Beta, right? So when she comes back, so so far, you might be wondering, why is he showing you? Why we wasted this time? The reason is because what we've assumed here, this has been the reference frame where Beta isn't moving. In other words, where Beta is the one who's sort of still, and then it's an alpha moving. So we've taken that as the reference frame. However, you can take this and go another step. So look at this. So when the in the frame where uh, reference A is the one who moves, in other words, where beta is still, that's the one we just did. Alpha ages 4.35 and beta ages 10, right? We just did that one. So this right here, got it, okay. But what if you consider this frame? What if instead you considered that alpha is the reference frame that stays still and it's like beta goes away and then comes back. You think about it, if you're in the spaceship, it's like beta goes away, like you know, the Earth and beta go away, and then they come back again. And if you do that, everything gets reversed. So from there, then beta should age 4.35, and alpha should age 10. So what is it? 
You know, who's correct? Who's right? They can't both be right. This is exactly why it's a paradox. See, the paradox is because one way of looking at the situation says one thing, the other way says the other thing, and they're opposites. They're mutually exclusive. They can't both be right. So what's going on? See, do you see why we've explained what is the paradox? The paradox is, depending on which reference frame you look at, you can get two different sets of answers. So how do you get out of it? Uh, here's how we go. Oh, by the way, I like this picture right here. <laughs> just, that's how I feel. Uh, like this is too gravity, just a theory. This bro dude here is just diving. So here's how we resolve the paradox. Here's how we get out of it. Alpha was in the ship. And in order to do that, she needed to accelerate in order to turn around. So watch carefully. Alpha actually had to sort of come back around. Because if this here is the Earth. Or this is Alpha here. And this is Beta sitting on Earth. In order to go around, she had to accelerate. Now, you might think, ah, no, 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 she just goes around in a circle. Well, going around in a, you know, somehow you have to come back. In order to come back, you could actually go, and I guess in some magical situation, you could sort of put on the brakes and then, you know, go again. But to do that, you'd have to decelerate or accelerate in some way. So you can't get out of it that way. Uh, maybe you decide, oh, I'm going to go around in a circle. But actually, that's accelerating too, isn't it? Going around in a circle or a, an orbit of some kind is also an acceleration. So remember carefully that we talked about all this special relativity. All these rules here only work in inertial reference frames. In other words, non-accelerating frames. Now, the accelerating frame is not an inertial reference frame. This is key. In other words, alpha does not, uh, basically, her physics don't work. So basically, you could say that the one with the inertial frame will have the correct physics. In other words, beta will have the correct physics. So it really will be that beta who stays on Earth really will age 10 years. And alpha really will age 4.35 years. There's no other way around it. And again, that's how we get out of the paradox. Remember, it's because alpha had to accelerate. Therefore, she's not in an inertial reference frame. So you can't count her reference frame, um, you know, being still being the one that doesn't move you can't count that one that one doesn't work so that's how we sort of get out of it you can even look at it through a uh, space-time diagram uh, sorry this picture isn't very very clear but you can actually sort of do the drawings right here and figure out that okay um, this is a different speed though this is a different example but there's one where the person who stays on earth ages 10 years the person goes in a spaceship actually ages uh, eight years they do it really complicated with space-time diagrams but i think the main idea is just that you can get out of the paradox it's not really a paradox then so we're okay <laughs>